Good evening. Welcome to this evening's council meeting for Monday, September the, uh, I've forgotten what the day it is, 18th. And uh, I'm Mayor Ted Schaefer and with me are my council colleagues. I have Councillor Jack Arnold, Councillor Paul Albrecht, Councillor Rudy Stortaboom. On the other side, I have Councillor Gail Martin, Councillor Val Vandenbroek, Councillor Nathan Pahal, and at the staff table, I have Darren Light, who is our Director of Corporate Services. We have Kelly Kenny.
uh, department edition, and this area is uh, parts edition. Uh, even after expansion, there is still 137 parking spots, parking stalls left, which is above of uh, above of required 120. So in this case, it looks okay. Um, this page actually is the same as the previous one in a bigger scale and shows additional information for the slab elevations and uh, grades around the buildings and so on. Now the next three pages I would run quickly because they just show, uh, like a key plans, show the uh, amount, uh, illustrate amount of uh, a new edition. just took the black identity of the Mini. This is how the standards of BMW goes. White is a uh, BMW identity and black is a Mini identity. So just to, to follow the same uh, look, we just uh, took the black identity of the Mini and transferred it to the uh, parts department, which is here, uh, with the same materials, same finishing, which uh, include um, black alucarbon panels with white frames and big panels of glazing and that same as mini it's a black tinted glass and black uh, aluminum frames and um, because the parts uh, the big uh, glass openings windows in the
concrete uh, wall and with uh, white alucabond uh, top and parapet. And this is basically it about this building. Uh, it doesn't come through. This is page is just for landscaping and it shows that um, not much of landscaping, of new landscaping is happening here. Uh, we try to preserve existing landscape as much as possible and there is a little bit of change in this area and uh, additional uh, uh, landscape islands uh, in here and in front of the building. Oh, this is it, it's coming. Well. Wow. Unanimous. So we'll see you in a couple minutes when we when we deal with it. So we just have to get rid of the, the preliminaries here from the other side. You want me to step out, right? No, oh, you can stay there. Okay. Uh, adoption of the minutes of the regular meeting held from September 11th. And I've got one change on there that the minutes of the regular meeting held on September 11th be adopted as amended under the Section 5 of the motion regarding Fraser sewage area DCCs increased by striking out the words valley where it appears in the motion. And uh, uh, Ms. Kenny asked us to put that in there. So motion by Councillor Martin, Councillor Arnold. All those in favor? It's unanimous four. Now, the business arising from the Committee of the Whole is that development permit application DP09-17 to accommodate a 10,000 square foot service and parts department expansion for the BMW Mini Langley dealership located at 6025 Collection Drive be approved. I need a motion. Uh, Councillor Albrecht and Councillor Arnold, is there a discussion? Councillor Pahal. Uh, thank you, uh, through the mayor and maybe to you. Uh, could you comment, are you retaining the existing green wall and the electric vehicle charging station? Sorry, I didn't point on it. And um, if you look on this elevation again, this place represents the former uh, green wall which was turning around the corner. And because um, it's not anymore like a, a closure of the whole building, there was a decision made uh, together with uh, BMW Corporate to replace it with just a black wall because it, it just divides two parts. The, it's not united, it's just dividing. That's how you cannot see anymore this green wall here. And just a follow up, uh, are you retaining the electric vehicle charging station? Uh, sorry, one more time. I think you have an EV charging station there currently. I could be mistaken. Mm, no, it's. So far, I'm not aware of this. Oh, it, no. uh, doesn't sorry. matter. Further discussion? Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We uh, dealt with this uh, at the Advisory Planning Commission on Wednesday, and uh, there were a number of uh, comments from the committee, all of them positive. Uh, and so it was uh, unanimous for, from them to forward it on to us, obviously, and to make the decision. Good. It's great to hear. You keeping your committee active? Good. So I need a, without further discussion, I need a motion. All those in favor? All in favor? Done. That was 
Arnold Albrecht there. <coughs> and uh, next item we have is uh, Community Spotlights. BC Lottery Corporation. I have Greg Walker and Lara Garrett to the mic. And uh, don't forget to use the mic nice and loud, please. Or yell. We're very good at being loud. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Looks like technology is just about going to work with us, Mr. Mayor, so I can probably get started. Thank you very much for um, good evening to you and to members of council. Am I projecting all right? Awesome. Um, it, it's, it's a pleasure to see so many familiar faces on both sides of, of you, Mr. Mayor, and a uh, pleasure, as I said to Ms. Hilton, to be back in the city of Langley as always. Um, but also to see so many familiar faces at these tables, Francis and Darren and Kim, it's, it's good to see you all. So I don't need to go on at great length about who I am. I'm Greg Walker. I'm the Director of Public Affairs. You may not uh, know, and it, uh, it's certainly a pleasure tonight to bring with me from the Public Affairs team, Lara Garretts. So uh, again, appreciate your time tonight. We had a couple of our presentation tonight, uh, a couple of points that, and updates that we want to provide about what we're doing as a corporate, on a corporate-wide basis, but also we have quite a bit, bit of information specific to Langley, um, which I think that you will find interesting. I'm going to um, turn over the microphone to Lara to speak to that for a little while, and then I'll be batting clean up Mr. Mayor on the issue of responsible gambling with quite a few new developments on that side that I think that you will be interested in. Lara? Thanks, Greg. So I know that many of you um, are quite familiar with who we are at BCLC, so I'll kind of keep the, the preamble short, but BCLC's mandate is to conduct and manage commercial gambling in British Columbia and to do so in a socially responsible way for the benefit of British Columbians. More important, though, is the why we were created. We were created to offer exceptional entertainment to benefit BC communities and to help them thrive and grow. As a Crown Corporation, we represent government and we report to the Honourable David Eby and that is through our Board of Directors. Our actions are subject to BC's Gaming Control Act under which each of our employees is registered. I guess I should move forward on our thing here. So we have a unique uh, made in BC operating model at BCLC whereby private sector service providers own or lease gambling facilities and operate them on our behalf. So if you were to walk into a casino, um, the easiest way to explain it is that BCLC owns most of the gambling equipment. So that would be things like the cards, the chips, um, the slot machines, for example. Um, BCLC also makes the decisions regarding the types of games that are offered and the quantity of games that are offered. And we do that using our expert understanding of the market. Our service providers, on the other hand, they build the facilities and they operate the facilities. Um, and that includes additional entertainment uh, amenities, things like restaurants, conference centers, hotels. In return for operating a facility, service providers receive a commission. And BCLC has agreements with about 17 different service providers in BC, including Gateway Casinos and Entertainment Limited, which, as you know, operates the Cascades Casino Langley. You might not know that in the last fiscal year, BCLC gambling activities generated $1.3 billion, and yes, that's billion with a B, in net income to the province of BC. This revenue supports things like healthcare, education, and community groups right across the province. Revenue generated by casino gambling, as you also probably know, benefits local projects and initiatives in communities like Langley, which receive something called a host local government payment for hosting a gambling facility. 
We are so proud of Cascades um, here in Langley. It's a true entertainment hub in the Fraser Valley that offers a great mix of gaming, restaurants, uh, pubs, conference facilities, and a hotel. There's approximately 940 slot machines on the gaming floor right now and 28 table games. And we continue to monitor this mix of gaming to make sure that it best reflects the needs of the market. As mentioned earlier, the city of Langley receives a 10% share of the net gaming income generated at Cascades. And during the last fiscal year, this was $6.9 million. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. I'll do that for you, too. I'm here for you. And as you know, the city used a portion of that uh, revenue to fund initial construction of the Tim's Community Center. Gaming revenue has also helped to fund projects like the Roberts Bank uh, Rail Corridor Overpasses and the Fraser Highway Bridge. Gaming revenue also benefits uh, community nonprofit organizations right across the province, and that's through the province of BC's Community Gaming Grant Program. Last year, the province of BC gave out $135 million in grants to nonprofit community organizations, 74 of which were right here in Langley. They include uh, the Langley Hospice Society, the Langley Community Music School Society, Langley Senior Resources Society, and the Langley Secondary School PAC. And Greg and I could go on and on and on. And if you come visit us at the UBCM booth next week, we can show you all of the grant recipients from Langley. In total, those grant recipients received $1.9 million last year to continue the good work that they do. BCLC and Gateway are committed to supporting Langley in more ways than what I've just spoken about as well. More than 520 people work at the casino, which also supports a variety of local vendors and suppliers. We also provide support for local and nonprofit organizations and events. And this summer, we were so proud to support the Arts Alive Festival, and later this month, we're sponsoring the McBurney Plaza Summer Series. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Greg, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about our player health strategy. Are you going to click? I'm going to click. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Um, I wanted to, as I said, back clean up on, on an issue that's very important to us at BCLC. It um, has in the past been referred to as responsible gambling and addressing issues pertaining to problem gambling. Um, and tonight I'm here to tell you a little bit about some changes in direction on, in that program and to give you an overall feel about where we're going to go on this issue. It's an issue that I can speak to with a great deal of de detail with this council because this council, amongst other things, have, has in the past, with help from Ms. Hilton and others and staff, hosted the Responsible Gambling Awareness Week. Um, which was uh, one of our first forays in reaching out to the community on this subject. We have taken a new leaf on, on that, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about tonight, because the Responsible Gambling Awareness Program focused specifically on folks that were challenged by our products, and we wanted to open that up to, to a pro an approach that considered all of our players at British Columbia Lottery Corporation, and helps, hence the expression player health. It, the, it's a comprehensive uh, program that's been endorsed by the corporation as a whole, and it has four pillars to, that, to this strategy. So let's have a look at those. One of the, the strategies that we're, we're talking about is looking using all the tactics that we have in our, uh, that are available to us at British Columbia Lottery Corporation to ensure that our players are informed about the nature of our products. It's, in, it's essential to safer p behavior in gaming that our players are able to understand and access information about our products. So informed decision making means everything from ensuring that people are aware of the odds to knowing what the problem gambling hotline number are, is. Those are the kinds of things on, a, on an awareness level that we will continue to do under, under this pillar of, of the player health strategy. When people know about the risks that are involved and people know how to access help if, it, if they need it, those are all important parts of this part of the strategy and uh, what we put under the, under the term of informed decision making. The second aspect is about positive play. 
And positive play refers to the fact that we know that we can have an emphasis on the consequences of risky play. We know we can do that. But it, again, it focuses on a very small majority. And again, the, that majority or minority of, of our players in British Columbia, 3.3% of adults have a challenge with our product. But the number of players that we have at BCLC is much larger. In fact, it's very high in, the, in the, pop, um, the majority of the population. So it's important for us to focus on healthy behaviors, the sorts of decisions that make sense, like establishing budgets before you go into a gaming facility, that kind of thing. Those are the focuses under, under this strategy of positive play. Now, the third point, and I'm glad that the, um, this, the slide before you at this point focuses on something a little bit different because you could be forgiven at this point to think that BCLC was strictly a facility, a, ca a casino operator. But in fact, our number two business unit it continues to be lotteries. And so you can see up front what, or on the slide the important uh, a kind of a then and a now approach to a scratch and win game. And what we're talking about here is in reducing problem gambling prevalence with BCLC products, the, the, um, the scratch and win uh, ticket on your left, called Ginger Do, is a, is a $2 scratch and win ticket that we used to provide, um, make available. Um, and it being gingerbread men, it has appeal, it could be interpreted as having appeal to children. You won't find this ticket anymore because we do not want to have children or encourage children to play our products. And as you all know, only those 19 years of age and older can uh, play our products and go into our facilities. And so the season's greetings $2 ticket is a revision of this. Um, and it's a focus on a, on a very detailed aspect of our scratch and win category. But it, I think it drills home the point that there are, there's no room for those underage to be playing pr our products at the British Columbia Lottery Corporation. We have a wide number of ways that we, um, both at casinos and lottery, that we can influence through our products. Um, the, the kind of behavior and play that we want. And this is just one small example of pillar number three in the player health strategy. And then finally, um, the, the slide above would indicate to you that someone in a customer service um, capacity uh, is ensuring that there is a proper referral and support for our players. Um, their problem gambling counseling, as you may know, in British Columbia is all is free, um, but it's make getting that help when you need it. We need to make sure that our customer uh, service folks are aware of this and, and make getting that messaging across. But that's only one small part. We have a, a commitment in, in BCLC for our casino employees. Every single casino employee goes through an appropriate response training program. So it's a program to make sure that they know, because they're going to be on the front line, they are going to be have a good likelihood that if they've seen one who's, someone who's challenged by these products, that's where they're going to see them, on the floor of a casino. So they have to be informed about initial response, the kinds of concerns that come forward from, from our players who may be challenged, and make sure that they're funneled into the right direction to get the help that they need. So an effective referral and treatment program, again, is something that we do throughout the system from customer service to on the floor of the casinos. Now, all of those strategies would not be possible if we did not have in our arsenal a very important weapon, and that weapon's called Game Sense. Game Sense is the presence that we have on a casino floor. Very unlike most casinos that you would go to, certainly south of the border, you would not see a facility on the floor of the casino, including the Cascades Casino here in the city of Langley, that is staffed and provides information to those who may want it about any aspect of our games, if they need referrals, if they need help. GameSense is a very innovative program that we started in 2009 and make sure that that information is available. That's a key component and, and will continue to do, do so. Um, the expansions that I think that you'll see, the game sense that are part of our player health program, you'll see additional um, staff being added to game sense locations to make sure that all of our facilities have that kind of a referral process. So we're continuing with that program. We know it's successful. We know what, using the positive play approach that it will continue to be successful and that our players will be responsive to it. I want to I close on a note about, so, about something that's very exciting for us, 
at BCLC, and I talked about the success of the GameSense program and its brand. You will see the GameSense brand if you happen to go to a facility in the province of Alberta or the province of Saskatchewan or the province of Manitoba because all of those governments have purchased the GameSense brand from us, from BCLC, and have implemented it because they thought that the approach was right, the, the focus on informing players was correct, and the effectiveness we've been able to demonstrate. And I'm very happy to, to say and excited to say that not only have those governments done so, also the government of the state of Massachusetts has purchased GameSense, and most re recently one of the largest and most successful casino operators in the world, MGM of uh, Las Vegas, has purchased the GameSense brand. Um, and they will be implementing it over in the next year to their 17 locations in throughout the United States, approximately 70,000 employees that would be getting this training. A, a huge program, but obviously another one that speaks to the ses success of the GameSense brand and what we're, the, the approach that we're taking to ensure player health. Before I finish, I do want to say that as part of this community outreach that, that, we're, that brought us before you today, Mr. Mayor, we will be in Langley again tomorrow. Lara and I are, are going to the Chamber of Commerce starting at 5 o'clock over at Cascades Casino. I do hope, uh, this is very um, important that I mention this and, and hope to be able to see all of you there. That would be great, and, uh, but we'll be there again tomorrow as part of this program. And we'll be sharing more information about how BCLC plays it forward. And we have a fun trivia game to make sure you guys were listening tonight as well, tomorrow. So, <laughs> hope to see you there. We hope to see you there, and I'd happy to take any questions you may have, Mr. Mayor. Questions at all from anybody? <laughs> <laughs> My colleague would like to research the MGM one, so. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Councillor Martin? I know exactly where she's coming from, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a question, um, but I, I do have some comments. Uh, in regards to the presentation that Larry gave, uh, we have benefited, the City of Langley certainly, uh, from having the casino here in the way of, of dollars and cents. I believe it's around 10 years, $73 million, and that does a lot for our, our infrastructure. Um, and and in, in regards to your presentation, Greg, I'm, I'm really happy that you're getting this out into the public. Uh, but no matter what you say, there are going to be those people that are totally opposed to gaming and, and those that, that enjoy the, the gaming. And, and you're never going to change that, and I don't think you're trying to change that. But I, I do um, applaud BCLC for the programs that they have had in the past and are going to implement. I think back um, over the summer where uh, BCLC did some advertising in our local paper in regards to uh, the benefits to Langley City in regards to the Tim Center and other things. And some of the comments that were made uh, on gaming, and, and I understand those people, you're never going to change their mind, but I do think that uh, BCLC is responsible in trying to help those people that may have a problem. And I, I, you know, one of the comments that kept repeating itself was the little old ladies that go and, and spend their pensions and stuff like that. But obviously you say your staff is trained to, to pick up um, where there may be a problem in, in that regard. So I do uh, uh, applaud BCLC. I think uh, we've had a great relationship certainly with you over the past <laughs> several years. And um, Again, you're not going to change everybody's mind, but it's each individual's choice. And, and yes, there are those that are going to get caught uh, in the gambling world, and, and hopefully BCLC employees will pick that up. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Pahal. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Uh, quickly, how long has this player health program been going for? Is that brand new? or? Um, the Responsible Gambling Program has been in effect for seven, seven or eight years yeah. now. Um, as I said, and I appreciate the, uh, the question, Councillor, we've, we've changed that focus from one of awareness and building education amongst our players to, this, to the player health strategy. So we've renamed it and we've changed the focus because we, we want to move beyond just it being an awareness program. It's, it's pretty exciting, um, but is it, it's new, that particular refocusing though, right? Because yes. I haven't seen it yeah. before. Yes, Mr. Mayor, through you. Ah, thank you. Any more? Seeing none, 
I'd just like to re reiterate what my council colleague has said about uh, working in the community. I know BCLC has worked um, to give to some of the charities that are in this community, and that's BCLC. But Gateway Gaming itself, through the city, helps smaller groups or organizations. Absolutely. You know, and the, the $500 or the $1,000 that uh, the charities that, you know, we help and support in this community it goes a, a, a long way. I could name quite a few of them, but to, to uh, BCLC and to Gateway Gaming, you know, it, it's great that they're good corporate citizens. And uh, I believe uh, BCLC was part of the McBurney Plaza uh, corporate, uh, corporate sponsorship. Uh, there's a few others probably in the, in the city, you know, helping with the overpasses, which in turn helps you know, communities around us, surrounding us, is Surrey, uh, you know, the township of Langley. Yeah. And that goes a long way. And, uh, you know, as uh, my colleague said, that it's nice to, to be involved, that you're involved with it. So, again, we shall see you tomorrow. I know there's a few of us going to be there. And, uh, and some will be at UBCM, Mr. Mayor. Oh, at UBCM, yes. I can think of one in particular. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. We'll catch you. Thank you very much, places. Mr. Mayor. Thank Madam you. Members of Council. Next, we have under the uh, Langley Environmental Partner Society, we have Carly here. And uh, welcome. Thank you. And don't forget to have the mic really close okay. to you so people can hear you. Hello, Mr. Mayor and Council. Thank you for having me here. Can you hear me all right? My name is Carly Stromston, and I work at Langley Environmental Partner Society, also known as LAPS. Uh, over the past six years, LAPS has received funding from the City of Langley for the Summer Youth Employment Project. Um, youth Im hired by this project perform invasive plant removal in the City of Langley that the City staff would not normally get to. So this is a picture of the Eco Crew this summer. Um, so the Eco Crew consists of a coordinator, myself, uh, two post-secondary students, Nicole and Ainsley, and three secondary students, Sophia, Rohan, and Evan. So this is just an outline of some of the topics I'll be covering over this presentation. So firstly, I'll talk about some of the goals that we set for this summer. Uh, secondly, some of the results and the work that we did in the field, and then lastly, some of the community education. So overall, our goal was to provide um, employment to Langley youth, to enhance the natural habitat in the city of Langley, and to provide uh, community education on invasive plants. So this is just a list of some of the results from the summer. Um, the focus was on uh, blackberry removal this year at select sites, including Brine Lagoon and Sendal Gardens. But overall, we did uh, invasive species removal at seven sites and removed over uh, 600 meters squared of invasive plants. We also did invasive mapping uh, this year uh, that was new along all the trails. Uh, we removed over 18, 118 pounds of garbage and also new this year was pollinator monitoring. We attended over, um, we attended eight community events and uh, the crew um, gained some valuable skills and knowledge while enhancing the natural habitat in the city of Langley. So the crew recorded the location of invasive plant species along all the trails uh, using GPSs. This information is really valuable for prioritizing areas for invasive uh, species removal. So this uh, mapping of the trail system is a first step in a larger invasive species mapping within the city of Langley. Um, also new this year was pollinator monitoring. Uh, this is also a first step in um, enhancing and creating more habitat for pollinator species. So this is just a map that was generated from the data collected from the invasive species uh, mapping. 
So this is actually Pleasantdale Creek Trail. Um, you'll see on the right hand side there's a legend showing uh, the list of invasive plant species that were found along this trail. So the purple dots are blackberry and you can also see quite a bit of ivy in the green. This is a heat map that is generated from the same data. So a heat map shows the concentration of invasive plant species in a certain area. So the red dots show the highest concentration of invasive plant species. Uh, so those areas were targeted by the crew this summer. So this is just a list of some of the invasive plant species that uh, were removed uh, this summer along the trails and some parks. So Himalayan blackberry was a large part of the invasive species that we removed. So I'm just going to show you some before and after pictures of some of the sites that we worked at this summer. So this is Langley Creek Trail. A lot of blackberry was removed here and then the reed canary grass uh, was uh, stomped on. Uh, a fair amount of work was done at Bryan Lagoon. A lot of blackberry was removed here. Uh, quite a few native plant species are, are uh, found at Bryan Lagoon. So uh, in this picture you can see some red osier dogwood. Uh, blackberry was uh, removed to free up the red, red osier dogwood here. Another picture of Bryan Lagoon, a before and after picture. So uh, some blackberry was removed here. Sandal Gardens, a before and after picture, a lot of blackberry and ivy uh, growing up the trees, uh, and Morning Glory was removed from this site. At Pleasantdale Creek Trail, we had uh, lots of ivy growing up the trees, so uh, that was taken down. As well, on the right-hand side, you'll see Lamium. Uh, Lamium is a, a ground cover, it's an invasive plant, so a lot of that was uh, removed from that site too. At Bryden Pond, purple loose strife uh, flower heads were cut to prevent further spread. Purple loose strife is a very uh, invasive um, species that outcompetes a lot of our native plants in the wetland ecosystems. We removed 118 pounds of garbage uh, from the trails and from some roadsides. Uh, focus here was Pleasantdale uh, Creek Trail. Uh, about over 10 uh, cleanup events were done this summer. And this is just a list of some of the events that we attended. So the crew talked to the public about invasive species, uh, the identification of them, what they can do if they see them, and as well as uh, proper disposal of green waste. In addition, uh, the crew talked to the public about watershed uh, stewardship education, so we had um, aquatic invertebrates and the public learnt about uh, what makes for a healthy stream. And in partnership with the City of Langley, LEPS will be doing some upcoming projects. So after the removal of invasive plant species at Sentinel Gardens and Bryan Lagoon, we will be doing some planting here in the near, near future. As well, we will be doing pollinator habitat creation in the BC Hydro right-of-way over the next two years. So thank you very much for having me here and thank you very much for continuing to support the Summer Youth Employment Project. Thank you for your presentation. Questions? Councillor Albrecht. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carly. Uh, I know I always uh, look forward to the LEPS report. Uh, you and the, and the kids do a fabulous job in, in uh, uh, improving our community, but also it's nice to have them get involved with understanding what uh, the value of, of our environment and, and what they can do to help make it better. Um, I was just wondering, um, um, the uh, the disposal or the, um, the yeah the disposal of the invasive species uh, mm -hmm. is that taken care of by yourselves or do, does it come to uh, to our waste disposal people uh, to the Langley um, the city uh, yard I guess you call it um, that's where we take the blackberry yeah further councillor Storyboom. Hi, Carly. Hi. Thanks so much for your presentation. It's always good to see you. 
appreciate the hard work that you do in our community. And uh, I uh, couldn't help but notice you mentioned the pollinator habitat that mm -hmm. you're planning on uh, uh, introducing to the uh, BC Hydro right of way. Is that in conjunction with the uh, urban farm application, or is that independent of the urban farm proposal? Um, I, I couldn't tell you. I don't believe so. Um, Rick, I don't know if you have some more information on that. Uh, Councillor Slonimu through the mayor. No, that's a completely separate issue. Okay. This is just through the lips. So that's a go for the pollinator habitat? Uh, that's something their their program. It has nothing to do with the, okay. the Hydro Right Awake uh, Urban Farm Concept Plan. Okay. Well, I, I know there's a, a concern about uh, bees. Yes. And uh, I know that uh, um, the numbers are down. So uh, mm -hmm. the idea of having bees pollinating in our community is uh, a good thing, a healthy thing. Yeah, yeah, we'll be planting some plants that will attract them mm -hmm. uh, in that area, the hydro right of way, mm -hmm. this fall, so. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Thank you. As a non-gardener, when you get rid of the blackberries, mm -hmm. how, how do you stop them from coming back? Do you take the roots out and everything? Yeah, so we usually cut them down and then um, it's r always really good to dig up the roots as well, but uh, for large areas uh, we often don't have time to dig up the roots, so often we just we keep going back and cutting down the same area, and often it'll take about five years if you keep cutting them back. Oh, does it? Yes, okay. to kind of um, expend, they will expend the, all their energy in the roots if you keep at it for five years. Well, I've come to the conclusion by being <laughs> invaded by blackberries from the floodplain. I need a trail right behind my place so you'll come and do them. <laughs> you guys do a great job. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Well, seeing nothing else, thank you for coming. Great presentation. Okay. You might want to talk to Mr. Walker uh, on when he's handing out his grants. Uh, <laughs> feel free to apply to some. You know, he. You know, he's, he's helping out Langley City and the area a lot, so you guys are doing a lot, so I just see a win-win there. <laughs> yeah, not that, yeah, perfect. I think he walked into that himself, so with your presentation tonight, right on. Well, thank you again. Okay. You guys are doing a great job, and it gives people uh, an opportunity to go out and gives them some uh, self-worth, too. You get out there, you're working, helping out in the community, and doing something positive. Great to have young kids like yourselves doing this. Again, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, next item we have is under the mayor's report, upcoming meetings. Next one is October 2nd, 2017. Next one after that is October 23rd. And uh, now we have a Metro Vancouver update by Councillor Stordeboom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there have been no board meetings this past week. However, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, Metro Vancouver's RateOurHome.ca resource. Uh, Single-family homes are responsible for about 40% of the greenhouse gases coming from buildings. To reduce these emissions, tools are available to help people make decisions that are better for their families and the environment. Home energy labels like the EnerGuide rating system tell us how energy efficient a home is, how efficient it could become, and how it compares to other rated homes. Energy efficient homes do more than save you money on utility bills. They are often healthier homes with better indoor air quality, fewer moisture problems, and are quieter and better insulated from outside temperatures and noise. RateOurHome.ca creates awareness of home energy labels to make carbon emissions and energy use in homes more visible to everyone. The home energy map on RateOurHome.ca allows owners or builders to display their property's EnerGuide label. You can search properties by EnerGuide rating, type of home, and by location on the map. It's a great way to learn more about how homes perform when it comes to energy efficiency and carbon emissions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Stordeboom. Next, we have uh, library happenings. Councillor Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, for uh, September the 18th, uh, the Science Literacy Week, Makey Makey, starts on 
Friday, September the 22nd from 2 to 3. And you can learn what a Makey Makey is and give it a whirl. First, you use your artistic skills to create an animal from pipe cleaners. Then using Makey Makey, give your animal the power of speech. Adults will have just as much fun as children. And the TAG, the Teen Advisory Group, is the first Tuesday of each month, starting October the 3rd from 6.30 till 8. TAG is a group of committed teens who volunteer their time and energy in support of their library. The TAG members meet to organize library programs for teens, volunteers reading buddies, and help with library events. The meetings are fun and always include snacks, TAG membership looks great on resumes and college applications and all activities are in volunteer hours and you can apply at our library and their new members are always welcome. And they're having a couple of lunch with TED series on September the 18th at Science on the Brain from 12 to 1. You can listen to fascinating stories about the brain from psychologist Dan Gilbert and brain researcher Jill Bolte-Taylor. You can bring your lunch and the library will supply the drinks. And the next uh, TED series is Elon Musk's World of Technology, which is Wednesday, September the 20th from 12 to 1. You can listen to a fascinating interview with Tesla inventor and CEO Elon Musk, whose latest project includes space, space exploration and underground highways. Again, you can bring your lunch and the library will supply the drinks. And on Tuesday, September the 28th from 6 till 8, they have a Prepare Your Garden for Winter, and you can join horticulturist Angelica Headley as she walks, through, walks you through steps in getting your garden ready. <clears throat> and I just want to give an update on the library renovations. The main bank of public computers has been moved closer to the service desk for better service and to help with security. Shelving and furniture has been rearranged to provide a dedicated space for teens and more flexibility for programming. And we will be receiving additional shelving and it will be, uh, there will be some final shifting in motion when we get that. Tiling and carpeting are complete. Painting will be finished by the end of the week and several smaller updates to furniture and displays are in progress. And finally, um, I would like to announce that our permanent library manager, Kim Constable, will be returning from parental leave on J September the 25th. She will be overlapping one day with the outgoing acting manager, Joanne Sleeman. And um, <clears throat> I just want to say uh, Joanne has been a wonderful acting manager over this past year. I've really enjoyed working with her. But she did email me the other day. And she said, would you mind passing on my thanks to Mayor and Council for accommodating me here in Langley. I really have enjoyed working here so much and Langley now feels like home. It doesn't take long to develop that feeling of ownership and belonging. So I say thank you publicly to Joanne and uh, she really has enjoyed her time here and I certainly enjoyed working with her. So, And I will pass on our best wishes to her at the board on, on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Anything else from anybody? On, well, you've got the, the chance. No. Ooh, it's an open door. Open, open door. door. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a shot. <laughs> okay. Bylaws. The next business item is bylaw 3025. And the motion is first and second reading of the bylaw cited as the discharge of a land use contract number 06A-74 bylaw 2017 number 3025. And this is at 5040205A Street. And the owners applied to have the land use contract discharged from the title of the property to facilitate a building permit application for a secondary suite. And I need a mover and a seconder. So Councillor Stordeboom. Councillor Albrecht. Discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous four. Second one we have is bylaw 3030. First and second bylaw for the bylaw cited as the discharge of land use contract number 2373 bylaw 2017 number 3030. And this is at 202154A Avenue. And this is for the same, is, is to uh, 
the owners applied to have a land use contract discharged from the title to facilitate a building permit application for a secondary suite. I need a mover and a seconder. Again, Councillor Arnold and Storta Boom. All those in favor? It's unanimous four. Next item we have is the final reading of the bylaw cited as the officer establishment bylaw number 2011, number 2855, amendment bylaw number 32017, number 3026. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor so. Martin, Councillor Albrecht. All those in favor? It's unanimous four. Next item we have is first and second reading of the bylaw cited as zoning bylaw 1996 number 2100 amendment number 1392017 number 3027. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Stortebroom, Councillor Martin. Discussion at all? Seeing none, all in favor? Against? Unanimous. Okay, the next one is the uh, bylaw 3028, a motion, the final reading of the bylaw cited as the fire protection and safety bylaw 2009, number 2784, amendment number two, bylaw 2017, number 3028. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Paul and Councillor Stortaboom. All those in favor? It's unanimous four. Under the administrative reports, we have a traffic calming at Michaud Crescent and 201 A Street. And uh, I'll let Mr. Baumhoff speak to it, but the motion will be that council approve traffic calming options A and B for Michaud Crescent and 201 A Street, 55 A Avenue, including three speed bumps on Michaud, two speed bumps on 201 A, and temporary painted curb bulges with delineators at the intersection of Michaud Crescent and 201A Street for an estimated budget of 55000 know. Now you want it. <laughs> Councillor Pahal. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Pahal, Councillor Martin. Okay. M Mr. Uh, Baumhoff, would you like to? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the result of uh, some investigative work that we did on traffic calming on Michaud Crescent and the result of uh, public consultation and the public overwhelmingly uh, supported both of the options to be completed at this time. Uh, so there was the option of doing one or the other or both. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, the intersection will be, uh, in intersection will work will be completed. Uh, that will be involve narrowing the intersection with uh, painted lines. It's more of a, uh, a temporary nature of, of work. It would uh, involve painted lines and uh, bollards that would uh, cause the traffic to see that there's a narrowing at the intersection and the crosswalks would also be a narrower crossing. And there's five, sets, uh, five speed humps that would be installed both north or uh, east and west of the intersection as well as north of the intersection on 201A. So for a total cost of 55000 and, and the reason why it's of a temporary nature is um, that there are there's plans to complete a greenway plan for Michaud Crescent. So that would be completed next year, a concept plan, and then possibly future funding in future years. Um, but that will involve further enhancements to the street um, and potentially ad additional traffic calming features as well. Discussion, Councillor uh, uh, Albrecht and Storyboom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mr. Baumhoff. Uh, just, just to be clear, um, there was a mailed-out ballot, as well as a public open house. Uh, yes. Because I, I just want to commend staff for uh, doing a pretty thorough attempt at uh, contacting and getting feedback from our community in order to establish. Uh, some guiding principles on what we want to have in that particular area and the concerns raised. So um, if I could just re reinforce the public that if you're, if you want change and you want it to be done the right way, we need to hear from you when we have these public opportunities. So take advantage of them and I just wanted to thank staff for doing that. 
Councillor Storteboom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too wanted to compliment staff on uh, being proactive in approaching the community. Uh, um, Linwood Park has uh, become a very special place for a lot of people. Recent enhancements have uh, caused the uh, neighborhood to uh, take a greater degree of ownership in the park and all that goes on there. And I'm really, really happy to see it. Um, so as such, um, this initiative, while it may have been something that staff was looking at and recommending to council, uh, it's really been driven by the community and the people who live there. And I too wanted to uh, compliment the uh, residents of the area and uh, thank them for their input and uh, thanks staff for a very creative approach, especially around the intersection of Rashad and 201A. I think we'll probably be getting a lot of compliments, uh, certainly comments on that new configuration and um, I just wanted to say thank you very much. I'm looking forward to seeing this happen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Pahal. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, this whole public consultation has been very well handled uh, and I'm really excited to see this move forward. Of all the things I've attended so far, this is the one that's uh, solicited the most response for people in our community and the most positive response. I think it was something like 80 to 90 percent support for traffic calming were proposed, which to me is unheard of for support. And I think what we've heard from residents is let's get it done as fast as possible. So I'm looking forward to Absolutely. see this getting implemented. So thanks again. Good. Thank you. Anything else? Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, it was interesting uh, listening to Councillor Storteboom talk about Linwood Park. Uh, I'm over there fairly regularly for the uh, dog off leash area, uh, but the, even just watching the kids that are enjoying, especially a lot of the new stuff that we've put in, and uh, it, that park is just so so busy. And it, it's interesting. I get talking to people, and, and they say, "Well, where did that name Linwood come from?" And I say, "Well, see that apartment building over there? The house that was there before that was Mrs. Mrs. Linwood's house." <laughs> and people, oh. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, you know it's it's a an area where the kids enjoy it, the dogs enjoy it. People communicate with each other and and have a good time. And uh, so to make improvements to the traffic in the area, I think it's really been something we've been looking for for a long time. That's great. Anything else? Seeing none. All those in favor? Against? It's unanimous for. We've got some correspondence from Big Brothers Big Sisters. I just uh, see that uh, Mayor Froze is on there and uh, it's interesting. I guess it's just a general letter that goes out so maybe we could uh, reciprocate and uh, we'll send them one from the city to, to the township and that's from council. So it's not just therefore I, it would be therefore Langley City Council. So, thank you very much. Uh, anything else? Seeing none, I need a motion to adjourn. Councillor Storteboom, Councillor Arnold, all those in favor, it's unanimous for.